Don't get weird on us. It's only radio. 610 WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. 610 WIOD presents The Neil Rogers Show. To talk with Neil, call 622 WIOD in Dade, 767 WIOD in Broward. Mobile One and AT&T wireless customers can call toll-free at Pound IOD. And now, not only across South Florida, but across the nation and Canada, too. Call toll-free at 1-888-474-WIOD. And now, The Neil Rogers Show. If I was but Paxson, all day long I'd be de be de bum If I was the Texan Goy Oi! I'd buy up all the stations Like the light bulb love in Zeta, I and Z and IOD I'd have lots of money in the bank Annoying lots of goyim like Roy Only I'd have a radio network that nobody carries But everyone has to run the spots TV, cable, real estate I would own oh! I'd have a half a dozen big FM stations And six or seven AM stations too and that's just in Hallandale alone. Oi! If I was but Texan, all day long I'd fiddle with my knob. If I was my Paxson's boy, I'd rearrange the format. By the way, the bird's coming back. I'd have shekels, you know what I mean. And then Stan Major. I'd be richer <laughs> than a freaking queen. Steve Kane. Wayne Heisinger would be turning green. Joey Reynolds. If I was that Texan The Carkle. Panthers had a goal called back for a man in the crease. The Devils have the only legal one. Rob Niedermeyer with a shot. He scores! McKay turning, shouldered off by Lowry, but McKay kept moving. Randy McKay twisting with it. Centering pass, score! Lowry, two to one, Panthers. Panthers have it, Brodeur has it left. Hub had it knocked away by Andrichuk. Floated back on again, and it's collared by Niedermeyer. Now headed to the bench, Brodeur. The Devils will go with six attackers. Niedermeyer sent it to the corner. Hacked along by Dvorak. Waiting as Gilmore keeps it alive. Gilmore shoots. Save made by Van Beesbrook. Off Gilmore again. Fed one to Garen. Knocked away. Backhander up over the glass. Or off of the net and then off the glass. Own line flipped it along further. Niedermeyer around behind, but it's Gilmore out in front. They hack away at it still. It's Gilmore to Garen. He can't get a shot away in the way of Dvorak. Cleared back off. Able to keep it his own line. The fans are standing. It's difficult to see. Puck came back over now to Dvorak. Down the ice and in. You know, somebody better tell us right at Dvorak, kid, to quit messing with my predictions, okay? What did I say yesterday? Panthers 3, New Jersey 2, and there it was, 3-2. to two. It was right within my grasp and the score, too. And this smart-ass kid scores that empty net goal. But thank you very much, Radek, because it got us out of there with 30 seconds left. No traffic whatsoever. Got out of there like a bat out of hell. And it was great. Oh! All of a sudden, out of nowhere, and of all people, of all people to set a fire under the ass of this team, Robbie Niedermeyer. Robbie Niedermeyer, who all of a sudden got that wake-up call. In fact, as he, and this is the God's honest truth, God dang. Just before he scored the tying goal there in the third period, and this is the first time we've all season long won a game after trailing after two, he's coming across the blue line, and I'm starting my own kind of like under my breath. Robbie, Robbie, I'm doing it sarcastically. 
And just before we took the shot, I'm going, Robbie, and bada bing, right in the net. And everybody, including me, gets up and we're screaming. Then, of course, he gets in the fight and kicks Chambers' ass, big time. And then the crowd is all going, Robbie, Robbie, we're, we're easy, okay? We're easy, okay? We forget all the other stuff. Nice going, Robbie. And then Dave Lowry, and what a pass by Shepard on that first goal. I know you don't want to hear about it, you non-hockey boring people, okay? It was great. Just what the doctor ordered at the right time. A freaking miracle, okay? A freaking unbelievable miracle just when things were looking pretty grim, man, slim and grim, and all of a sudden these guys butched up. Nice going, Robbie. Nice going, Dave. Shepard, what a pass, huh? So that was some night at the arena last night. The only problem, again, that the crowd... Oh, man. Our topic today, by the way, and I notice uh, certain shows, they're doing topics these days. But our topic... <laughs> our topic today is drunken goyim at the sporting events in South Florida. Boy, did we have drunks there last night. We had more drunks per square inch than you could shake your thing into. I mean, just Unbelievable. And then the crowd, and I'm not just talking about the rat man up there who's a real asshole. I'm talking about a whole thousands of people. In the third period there, there was that situation, I forget who it was. Was it uh, Scott Niedermeyer and uh, Murphy? Somebody in Murphy. I'm pretty sure it was Scott Niedermeyer. Better check. Better check the thing here and see who got the double minor, okay? And Rob Schick, the referee, calls the penalty. There's an original penalty against Jersey, and then uh, Murphy and whoever it was, I think, Niedermeyer, get into it. Let me check here. Where's the thing? Okay, let's see. Third period. Yeah, uh, Scott Niedermeyer, a double minor. And so the referee is called a double minor, four minutes on them and two minutes on Murphy for retaliating, which is fine. We got the man advantage. We got a power play. And now the crowd, not even understanding it, not even getting it, even though they only put the two minutes for uh, Niedermar up there on the board for them. And now the crowd, thousands of them are screaming, hey, ref, you suck. And we're all looking at each other like, what is wrong with you? He just gave us a power play out of that, you idiots, you morons. When are you going to learn? It's embarrassing, okay? Oh, and by the way, so Rimmer don't get all ruffled. The reason I had to play uh, Mike Emmerich this morning is my uh, small dish, the VCR I had going with that. For some reason, one of the 85,000 power outages in Plantation in the last couple of days, it flipped over to short play. So I get home after the game last night, and uh, all I got is the New Jersey. Thank goodness I taped them both. See, always have a backup. Always have a backup behind you, well, even if it's uh, Paul Coffey. But at any rate, uh, so that's the only telecast I had. And uh, Mike Emmer, quite frankly, that wasn't his best work ever, but it's uh, all we got. So it's better than nothing. So that's why you weren't on there, Rimmer. So don't get all bent out of shape and psychotic and emotional as usual, okay? That's the reason we had the Emmer highlights from Sports Channel, uh, uh, whatever it is, that does the Devil's Games. So there we go. It was a great night. A good time was had by all. We had a lot of drunks. And I saw the Mad Dog there last night. Mad Dog was up there enjoying it, sitting up there, kind of kicking back with 85 beers in his hand. He was really uh, having a great time. And he said to me, I like guys. And I said, hey, I'm, uh, I'll see you. So at any rate, let's see, Mandich was there. Who else? Oh, and then before I left the house, this is the best news of all. Getting ready to go to the hockey game, hoping for a 3-2 Panther win, which it really was 3-2. The empty net goal was the icing on the cake. Oh, it was icing? No, just a, uh, anyway. So at any rate, the phone rings, and who is it? It's that bitch. Eleanor Brecher from the Miami Herald. That f***ing bitch. Now, I just want to say this, okay, Ellie? Don't bother me. Any information that I have to pass along, I will give to Tom Jicka. Because Tom, even though we've had our moments over the years, who hasn't? When you've been here for as many years as Tom and I have been, you're going to have your moments. But Tom's a good guy, and he doesn't write bull crap. He doesn't just make things up. And he also isn't an Ojean provocateur desperate to try to create a problem just to get a spicy quote create some kind of a war. Tom's got a real nice piece. In fact, he ought to be wearing it in that picture. No, I mean, he's got a nice piece in the Sun Sentinel this morning on page uh, 4E. Bid to censor Rogers prompted move. How do you like that? So at any rate, and uh, basically what I'm reading in the article here is all uh, pretty accurate and all what I told him. And Ellie Brecker, uh, two minutes before I'm leaving the house to go to the hockey game and this bitch calls again. I said, what do you want, Ellie? Well, you won't believe this, but I'm writing another story. I said, when's the book coming out already, honey? Why don't you just write I'm making $10 million a year and just uh, get it over with. Make up whatever you want. And she's another one of these people who doesn't get it. She ought to work for Paxson. She doesn't get it. She doesn't get the message. Like a lot of other people who don't get the message. We're getting email now. We're getting faxes for people about, well, Hank uh, thinks this, and uh, the Paxson people. That, you know, see, what you don't understand, that little handful of malcontent yentas out there, I don't really care. I don't care. 
I don't care if this one's going ballistic. I don't care if that one is having a nervous breakdown. I don't care if, uh, let's see, who are they bringing in? Don Imus, Howard Stern, and uh, Jerry Williams, and William B. Williams. They're all coming in here to do midday. Uh, fine. Great. Life goes on. Mach's de Leben, as they say in China. It's a paycheck. It's a living, okay? It's a business. But the number of, I mean, just the feeding frenzy that's going on here lately. I mean, Stan Major calling and, uh, uh, on the air here the other day. I almost said they called uh, somebody off the air, which I don't want to do that. But, uh, no, seriously, Stan sniffing around over here like they're going to put him on the air here on this radio station again after that earlier debacle to talk about um, uh, Milky Way uh, Dark. Remember those shows? Were you around then? I was doing them. I was bored of oh, them. Oh, oh, my God, and you survived that? Let's hear it for George, folks. Come on. Remember, that's how we uh, got me the job with you. Anybody buy a good watch lately? <laughs> you know how many years ago that is? And I still remember it now. That's like uh, seven, eight years ago. That's when Mr. Ego went to New York to WABC for his short-lived uh, run up there. And Stan Major. And yes, I must confess, I had... Well, I had nothing to do with that. I had something to do with getting him on here on the weekend there, which was bad enough. But then, as a desperation move, when they stuck him on there an afternoon drive, and Stan did many, many shows on Milky Way Dark and Milky Way Lights. I mean, don't take it personal, Stan. It's not personal. It's just business. And God, oh, I mean, it was pretty exciting radio. See, there are a lot of people who think that they can do this. Stream of consciousness, come on, and pa pa pa. See, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care what Walter Sabo says. I don't care what Harry Pina says. I don't care what Peter Bolger says. I don't care what anybody says. Topic talk radio where we come on and this is the topic we're going to talk about how many pedestrians you've hit this week with your car it is so boring it is so terminal and the demographics that it gets are so old just look at the light bulb man they had to put a special column in arbitron for dead people just so that the light bulb could show up in there that's how old topic radio gets demographically because living and breathing people don't care about that it is so that went out with knickers they went out with two-piece bathing suits for men. And these guys, man, they got all the answers. They want to hear those hot topics. They want to hear you push those hot buttons, baby. Even Lardass Limbo is in the tank. This company spent 125 grand, so I was told by the big man. What's his name? What's his name? But, 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 but. Yeah, he told me they spent 125 grand on wins to get that half-assed fat slob show, and he's dead in the water, man, because nobody wants to hear all that right-wing rhetoric anymore. They've heard it till it's coming out of their... Uh, Rectum. Exactly, out of their uh, body parts. But all these people are experts, and everybody, pa 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 man, they're in a feeding frenzy. You know something? It's great, because it's kind of a boring time in a boring town anyway. So leave it to me once again, by hook or by crook, to stimulate something out there. Get a little something going. Even the bird is uh, calling Alan Mason now. Alan Mason, no less. He wants to do this show. I don't think we could handle that. Do you? I think <laughs> that... Yeah, exactly. We'd have to bring our own bird on there. Or instead of the bird, maybe we could bring on... You heard the dirt. Of course, somebody was in here this morning saying, well, what's the difference? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to be betrayed no confidences, but I think everybody feels that way pretty much. As a matter of fact, just one last time, okay, just for old time's sake. If you missed the Neil Rogers show yesterday on 610 WIOD, you missed this. Is this the bird? Yeah. Bird, how you doing? Okay. Listen, do me a favor, play anything, because I can't stand listening to you. Uh, you sound like a douchebag. Do so I? Just do me a favor, play anything. Well, can I ask you a question before you go? Oh, God, you sound so stupid. I hate to talk to you. Yeah, go ahead. Well, why did you call me? I didn't call you. No, no, just to tell you not to say anything. Just play something. Oh, God, I can't stand it. Well, then why are you listening? Oh, play something already. Why won't you answer ah, my... I can't stand him. You won't... See, he won't talk to me. Oh, we got a car here. Hello? Yeah, we better get that car phone. 1015 at WYOD. Never... When Madonna's in town, she's not listening to us. What does this person with hope? 1018 at WIOD. Happy Thursday. It's a great day in town, man. We're going to have ticker tape parades. Everybody is on their feet. Everybody's all pumped up. They are. And, of course, we're going to be talking to Mike Lang, the voice of the Penguins, later on about 1 o'clock for a few minutes. Don't get panicky now. Rumor's not coming. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, 
Neil. I think the team might have had their BR 12 shot yesterday before the game. Could be. I think that's what done it. They will have what did I tell bit. you? All you doubting uh, Steve Thomas is out there. I told you, three to two Panthers, and I'll take uh, four to two just uh, to be safe. And I hate to admit it, but I think even Joe had a pretty decent game last Not night. Not bad for him. Yeah, that's Especially right. when he spent half the game in a penalty box. Keeps <laughs> us out of trouble. That's right. Keeps out of our way. Are hey, you going to Italian class on Saturday? Yes. Well, I want to invite you right across uh, the way on, at the swimming pool in the university. We're having a big uh, water polo tournament. Yeah. And you maybe want to check it out after class. We've got some of the top players in the world competing there. Really? It's a really fun sport to watch. Very you, physical and exciting. A lot of almost naked young guys, huh? Exactly. Great. Yeah, so check it out. It's a little short walk uh, kind of right behind the conference center where you're at there. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's, it's I didn't think there was anything behind the conference center. Yeah, it's just a little bit. There's a bunch of naked guys. Just a little bit to the side there uh, in the big, big swimming pool complex. Great. Yeah, check it out. If you uh, put your name on the list, uh, you want to pay admission even. All right. All righty. Thanks, pal. All right, Neil. Take Bottoms care. up. Okay. Bye. There you go. You know about those swimmers and uh, polo guys. Two open lines at Dade, 622-WIOD, two in Broward, 767. Anybody out there hit any pedestrians this week? Come on. That's our topic today. Who would you rather have, the Bird, uh, Stan Major, uh, Steve Kane, Ellie Brecher? Who do you want doing this show middays when I'm out of here? Come on, let's hear it. I hear Andrew Kalb is coming back and Phil's coming to produce his show. That's the rumor that I heard. Are you positive? Here, here's, oh, God. But Pete Bolger kind of laid it out for us. Did you notice? He's uh, not only very defensive continually and also very like, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's what he is. But did you notice the little thing he said that we were talking about one of the personalities on the station who happens, in my opinion, to be very weak? And he said, oh, you won't have to worry about that once everything kind of like plays out. Did you notice that? And then like uh, I just kind of like uh, piqued my curiosity. He said, oh, I've said too much already. He kind of like uh, slinked out into the hallway. Once everything plays out. Yeah, right. Because we're, ter- we're terrified of, these, uh, of this operation. Make no mistake about that. Make no mistake, everybody in the market is terrified that Paxson might keep it. I mean, might sell it. But that's what it is. I had it, like, almost right. Might sell it to somebody who knows what they're doing. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to read Tom Jicka's column in a little while, just to spice up a little interest in here, because not everybody reads the Sun Sentinel, I guess, and there's some pretty interesting crap in there that even I didn't know. Okay, let's go to uh, Aventura. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How about that home ice advantage coming on for us, huh? He looks pretty good. All we got to do is win one game. Listen, I wanted to talk to you about a news, uh, news commenta- commentation I heard this morning, a comment on the news. They, Let me uh, ask you before we do that, have you hit any pedestrians this week? No, I'm, uh, I'm trying real hard not to do that. I get into work real early. Okay. But anyways, they, they, this uh, 911 operator they, uh, that took the call from that, uh, that uh, young teenager that uh, there was uh, some crime going on in her home, and they uh, accused the uh, 911 operator of being rude. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. I thought it was a prerequisite to be a resident in Dade to be rude, or at least a tendency to be rude. That's right, especially if you're going to be a phone operator. Absolutely. Can you imagine if all the rude people in South Florida became, like, unconscious, like, at uh, 1030 for, like, two hours? Or if they just left. There would, or if they just left, would there, be, would there be anybody here? Not too many, just us. Golly, I can't believe it. Just you, Talk- me, and George. That's it. You and George. Talk to you later, Neil. Okay, go get Bye. some pedestrians. Absolutely. Okay. Dade lines wide open here. I thought we'd be having a party on the phone here today, man. I thought this town would be jumping on it. Oh, guess who was at the game last night? I didn't recognize him at all. You know, it's embarrassing when somebody comes up between periods and they uh, got a big smile on their face and they shake your hand and uh, remember me and you say, no. No, it was, it was Costas. Remember our friend Costas, the uh, Greek? Not Bob Costas, but like, uh, much younger and much uh, nicer. Than Bob Cox, Car- like a regular guy, but he's in the military and he's got like different hair and he lost a lot of weight and he looked great. I mean, real good. Nice to see you, Costas. 622 WIOD and Dade. We got any takers this morning or we're going to have to read the Tom Jicker column to jumpstart these bastards? I don't want to do that. We don't want to keep dwelling on this thing on and on and pop, 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 pop. And let me say it again, Ellie Brecker, don't bother me anymore. When you don't you get the message? What does it take to get the message across to some of these people? I've got nothing to tell you, sweetheart. Just keep doing what you've been doing. You and Barry Jackson make it up. Just keep making crap up and put it in the paper because we all know the Herald's got great credibility. And not only that, but I know that you've been trying to stir up the pot and uh, try to get people to say all kinds of crap about me. She did it with, uh, with let's see, with Harry Penis. She did it with Ronna Wolf. She's doing it with everybody here, calling the Paxson people and desperately trying to get them to make all kinds of caustic comments about me so she can start this war in the newspaper because there's nothing else going on and she's bored, I guess. And then she calls me on the phone and sucks my ass over the phone last night like you wouldn't believe. Oh, I wish you the best of luck and you know how fond I am. About- Blow it out your ass, uh, Ellie. 
Get out of here already. Go a runner. Go elope with Randy Rhodes and get out of my face. God, you jappy broad you. Nothing worse than phony bastards who give you the real, you know, the, the real good, uh, oh, yeah, I love you so much. And then behind your back, they're just, they're just turning it and twisting it and yanking it and pulling it and pushing it to try to uh, stir the pot. Here's a mobile in Palm Beach Gardens. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, you know how things, um, more things change, the more they remain the same? Yes, sir. Well, I know who your perfect replacement will be. Okay. Jay Michael. All right. Now there we're talking. We All right. Great. That'll be a good one, won't it? I like that. Yeah. Well, like everyone else, I'll be following you down the dial. That's not what I'm hearing. <laughs> That's not what I'm hearing. They think, yeah. uh, I'm, they're pretty sure here that uh, everybody's staying with 610 WIOD. Uh, well, and I think they well, got a good point. Well. Take care, Neil. Okay, see ya. Uh huh. By the way, what's that? Uh, what's the name of that song that's in uh, the uh, that Jay Michaels did? Let's see. I got sunshine on my radio. What is that? I guess it's still in the cart. I saved that one. I know it. I got it somewhere. It's another one of those Stan Major show uh, show songs. And I'm sure that, in fact, most of the people who are listening now, they're saying, "Stan, who? Who are you talking about? What is that? What is a Stan Major?" <coughs> And then, of course, it was Pete Bolger that uh, brought that up this morning, hoping I would talk about that. And you know what I'm saying? Not good for the ratings, Pete. Not good. We don't want to put up all those billboards and blow the audience off talking about Stan Major and those uh, stogies. Although it is... Uh, so anybody sm uh, eating any good Milky Way darks? Oh, and by the way! So I spoke to my doctor yesterday. This is a miracle. This is a major miracle, how I've survived this last several months. It, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. As fat as I've gotten, and I mean, I'm fat, again... Gained all the Atkins weight back. But you know something great about the Atkins? I hope, I hope that that babbling bitch, by the way, is listening along with her uh, A-physician husband. The one thing about the Atkins diet, not only does it improve your blood lipid levels, but at least in my case, it has this tremendous staying power. In other words, you can gain the weight back. You can do all you can eat, ice cream, and can't. And I'm not recommending that you do this. But for some reason, it seems to, there's this residual effect after you've done a long period of time of that. And if at least you try to do it occasionally in between, which it's been very much in between for me. Like, you know, six days off and one day on. And the diet, too. But at any rate, uh, my blood sugar was 139, which is not bad. My uh, cholesterol was 229, which is only like a point higher than it was uh, some months ago, whenever last time I did it. And not really that bad. I mean, it should be under 200, but 229 is not bad for a fat old fart like me. And my triglycerides were 100. Oh! Which back in the, before I did the Atkins, they were 300. Then they went to 66 and then to 77 and now 100, which they, they do tell you now that they'd like them to be 100 or less. Used to be 200. Your triglycerides, which is a very key indicator of like fart attack, is uh, keep it under 100. But I thought that was pretty damn good. And Dr., uh, what's his name? Dr. Mark said, you're right. These people around here are nuts. I said, I know. Whose blood is the... It must be somebody else's blood test. That's why they came out so good. Now I'm starting to get the message. Okay, we have an open line in day at 622-WIOD, one in Broward, 767, one on the mobile, one purple line, pound IOD, two on the other town lines, one triple eight. Our topic today is your favorite pedestrians you've killed. Our first caller will be Rick Sanchez. Oh, Soper's on the line? 610-WIOD. Okay, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but Pete did tell us who's going to be my replacement here. All right. Oh, look at that. It's eating the cart. I love it. It refuses to play. <laughs> look at that thing. I just can't keep a uh, secret. You know how it is? You came to town to do six Oh, that thing has had it, that cart. But we'll never hear you were here. I am that hemorrhoid. Bye. Bye. Joey. I better stop it there, because that cart, that's an old Zeta cart, by the way, Pete. Look at that. Look familiar? Oh, yeah, you got that. I'll huh? bring it back. No, seriously, that's one of those old Zeta. Will you give him some uh, B12 or something? Give him some drugs. Just a joke. Don't you remember you packed up all those carts for me and said, here, go get a salami sandwich and have a great life and get out of here? Uh, they gave me a whole... In fact, we're taking these cards, too, by the way, because they all belong to me, or Roy. Should I give them to Roy, or should we take them? He said, here, take them with Mar Blessing, and we'll also give you a stale salami sandwich from Wolfie's right up the street. Bye-bye, Joey. And I'd play the whole thing, except for the fact that this cart is like, uh... And you know something? This is one of those real old carts that's got no... Oh, it's got no pads in it. This... How the hell do these play? They, they don't even make... Well, they don't make carts anymore anyway, I guess. They're hard to get. But these are carts from, like, uh, before Einstein was a baby. The ones with no pads. Remember these? Oh, my God. Scotch Cart 2. 1827. I love it. 
and that's just uh, coincidentally the year Joey was born. How do you like that, Joey? I am that hemorrhoid. Starts Monday, 10 to 2 on 610 WIOD. Bill Marshall's coming back, too. We couldn't get the bird. A little too expensive. Bill Marshall's coming back on a laugh loop. Here's Cor Coral Springs. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Great. When are you leaving for QAM? Uh, someday. Okay. I don't know. Someday soon. Someday down the road. Uh, who knows? Only the shadow knows. I don't know. I can't. If I, if I knew a date, I would tell you right now. If I were a betting man, I'd say someday. So rumor has it you're teaming up with the Mad Dog and Brian Cox? Yeah, we're, that's right. We're doing it. <laughs> yep. I don't want to say what we're doing, but you can guess. The Panthers looked pretty good last night, huh? They were great, man. What a night. What a great night, except for the drunks and except for those assholes who don't understand the game yelling at the referee. But other than that, it was great. They look pretty good. I got to be honest. Hey, ref, you suck. Yeah, but he just called a double minor on Scott Niedermeyer. He plays for New Jersey. Maybe they thought it was uh, because his name was Niedermeyer. It was on us. I These people are so dumb. It's four years already, dummies. Get with it. Learn the game a little bit. Hey, Neil, I got to be honest with you. I've been a Flyers fan for 13 years. And no Lindros the next two games. He's got suspended a sentence, by the way. Is Michael Renberg out for the year? I, uh, well, he said that it wasn't as bad as they thought, but I don't know when he's coming. No, he's not out for the year. i tell you what. If he, he got like eight, uh, eight million stitches in his puss. I can't believe Bobby Clark hasn't addressed the goaltending situation there. If we would have had a goaltender, I mean, they can go somewhere. Yeah. Um, Hextall and that, I'm ready for him to drape back Pelly Lindberg in the, between the pipes. and. They, they, they're bringing him back. I'm telling they're you. They're going to put him and Terry Sawchuk in there together. They're going to tie him together. I'll tell you what, anybody can take that. It's going to be a good playoff this year. It's going to be exciting to watch. They're going to bring Glenn Hall back and see if he still pukes before the game, although he did play for <laughs> Chicago and St. Louis. How's your vet running? My vet is running great. It's a beautiful thing, and now I have two vets that are totally different, and uh, how happy could I be? You know what I'm saying? You got an NSX, too, right? Yes, I do. 96. Yep. A 96 red NSX, which I don't drive, but uh, it's a great car. What about the Lumina? Yeah, I, I can't afford it. <laughs> have a great day, pal. Hey, Neil, can I call some of douchebags? Yes. Ricky, Jimmy, and Dennis, you're a bunch of flaming, drippy douchebags. All right. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Can I, can I make one request? By the way, you? Steve Conway is going to be doing middays. What is can, it? Can I hear the two wee-wee song, please? Okay. Thanks a lot. See ya. The two wee-wee song? Oh, and now look. Oh, and Dave Graveline is going to be doing it? The bulletins are coming in fast and furious. Dave Graveline is going to be coming in. Of course, they're going to lock down all the equipment real tight. They're going to tie everything down real heavy duty. <laughs> You only have one wee wee, son. Oh, mommy, am I deformed? No, no, you're you're only supposed to have one. Is Daddy deformed? No. He has two wee wees. No, son, he he only has one. Oh, he, he. mommy, no. No, uh, -uh. he has two. Two? Yeah, a little one he pees with, and a great big one he brushes the babysitter's teeth with. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Happy uh, Thursday to you, sir. It's a great day, man. I haven't run over any pedestrians, although I tried to. This Damn guy had it. an earring. He moved too fast. Have you ever had... Even I noticed Rick and Suds are doing topics now, which I know Rick would deny vehemently, but I noticed they're doing topics. It seems like a disease. We better stamp it out before it kills WIOD. They're doing topics now. You don't think that came from Walter Sabo, do you, our consultant? Oh, God, I hope not. Oh, oh. my God. We're doing topics even on the Rick and Suds show? That's, that's, uh... That is a scary thing, and Rick keeps saying, we're not going to do topics, but the topic today is... <laughs> Gasp. <gasps> there it is. That's a clear indication of the downfall of Western civilization. It is. Listen, great game last night. Robbie Niedermeyer had some testicles for once. Robbie, was he... Uh, and you know something? Uh, earlier in the game, he wasn't doing anything. He was just... Uh, but I sat there in my seat as they crossed center ice. Here was Robbie with a puck, and I started going, Robbie, Robbie. And he crossed the blue line, went, Robbie. And he took that shot, and all of a sudden, it's in the net. And everybody went ballistic. And from that moment on, it's like somebody woke his ass up. Like he came out of a Rip Van Winkle-like coma. Yeah, he did the Gordy And then Howe. he beat the snot out of Sean Chambers there, which was great. I love that. He just beat the... Uh, he picked somebody good to fight with. He didn't pick, like, uh, Lyle Odeline or somebody like that. Yeah. Or uh, Ken Danico. He didn't uh, mess with them. He picked uh, somebody who could beat the crap out of him. He did a nice job. Nice going, Robbie. He did a Gordy Howe thing. A and a crowd is screaming, Robbie, Robbie. What a night to be there. Huh? Too bad the fans didn't understand what was going on, most of them. Oh, that was hilarious. I mean, we, we got a power play. Scott Niedermeyer got the... He uh, gets double a double minor. They give him four minutes. We're all excited where I am and then these other assholes across the way. Thank God on the other side. Oh, hey, ref, you suck. I think they're too close to the rat man. I think it's rubbing off. Yeah. All well, that you guys get a clue over there. 
Yeah, it's all the alcohol. The fumes seem to. Uh, what we're gonna, you know, what we're gonna do in the playoffs because there's such a demand for tickets now. We're gonna give them all a written test before they are allowed to come in the arena. And if they can't answer five basic questions about the game, they're not gonna be allowed to come in, no matter how many tickets they've got, how much money they got. That means nobody from Dade County is gonna pass. Right. Listen, uh, just have one shameless request. Yes, sir. Play uh, Mike Lang calling a Stu Barnes or Mario Lemieux goal. <laughs> a Stu Barnes goal. Well, by the way, we'll have Mike on at one o'clock. Oh, okay, but I'd love to hear his calls. Can you just play the uh, goal call? This is a four-minute penalty. Johnson looks it over in front for an open man. Stu Barnes does get it by Cousineau, and the Penguins have a 4-2 to two lead. Oh, fuck him, Dano. That wasn't very good. I don't like that. In fact, I don't even know why that one is in there. Okay, that wasn't one of Mike's, uh, you know, uh, Hall of Fame calls. I wouldn't say this might be better. Ned better the Penguins. Flip it ahead. The Penguins break out. They've got a chance here. Here comes Hicks on the right side. The Canadians trying to close it down. Hicks waits. Got a man open here. Barnes shooting and scoring. Stu Barnes nails the goal. And the Penguins lead 2 to nothing. I'll never teach a pig to sing. Stu Barnes. Two open lines in Broward. 767-9463-767-W. IOD. Our poll question today. Is it Joey Reynolds? Is it uh, Davey Gravy Line? Would you like to have Stan Major on here midday? Would you like Steve Kane? How about Alice Rantel? Come on. These are the names. Jim Phillips from Orlando. That's a very hot rumor that I just started. We got some heavy-duty names coming in to replace Dr. O'Neill. It'll be a piece of cake. Because when I see what plays out here, it's going to be dynamite. When they start playing that polka music, it's going to be good. That's right. Every, nobody's irreplaceable. I'm not under any delusions about that. This station's going to continue rolling along real strong, singing a song. Singing a lot of songs. So Tom Dicker writes, Bid the Center Rogers prompted move, but we'll get to that momentarily. Nice article, Tom. See, one thing about Tom Jickey, you can trust him. If you say something to Tom like, well, this is off the record, he doesn't put it in the paper. If you say, here's what I think, he puts what you think in the paper and doesn't, like, change it to suit himself, even if he does have a big bald spot. But with Eleanor Brecker and Barry Jackson, who are busy doing magic mushrooms, I guess, they just uh, hallucinate, and then, and then they start calling around trying to stir up trouble. Just when, I, just when we uh, got out... They pull us back in. Remember that? Godfather 3. Just when we were out, we got out, they pull us back in. Or whatever that was. What did he say? Let's get the script from Godfather 3 and see if the Pope wants another glass of tea. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, you think the fans didn't know the game yesterday. What are they going to do tomorrow when it may be the last time they see Lemieux play? I'm going to tell you, if we don't respond for... Yeah, that's a very good point. If we don't respond for Mario the way we should... Uh, in fact, it's very possibly the last time he's ever going to play here because uh, unless we meet them in the playoffs, and it's possible we would not, uh, unless that happens, uh, he may never play another game here on our ice. And if we don't treat Mario with the respect and the admiration he deserves, then I'm going to be really pissed off because Mario is... Uh, you know, I know that some people say Bobby Orr, and I used to say Bobby Orr, and some people say Gretzky, which I get really pissed off with that nose. But uh, to me, Mario Lemieux is the greatest player that ever put on a jock strap. Man, he's the best. Go Pens. Bye. See ya. Oh, go Pens. Yeah, right. See, now I take it back. Like I said, just be silent. Go pens. No, not go pens. Blow pens. They got no defense. Just keep that in mind. Shaky goaltending, no defense. And also, the rumor is that Yager, we'll talk to Mike Lang about it later. Rumor is that Yager has that re-aggravated that hamstring and uh, may not play in the game tomorrow night. Very good chance of that. Because in the game last night in Boston, he, I mean two nights ago, he looked really off his feed and was a non-factor Yager. And uh, if they don't have him healthy for the playoffs, they'll be out fast. I mean real fast. As in zippity doo But we'll find out from uh, what's-his-name later on. What's-his-name? Oh, yeah, the great Mike Lang. I want to mention it two times. Somebody gets upset. Here's uh, Kendall. Hello. Yeah, hey, Neil. Quick technical question for you. Yes, sir. Did you see yet uh, the replays of the goal they took away from us last night? The uh, Mellon B in the crease thing? No. Yes. No. Okay. Well, it, it, the way I understand it, the rule is the puck has to be crossing the goal line, not the crease. In other Wrong. Words, he Wrong. Had to, Wrong. Okay. His right skate has to be out before the puck enters the crease. Right. Okay, then... Our boy Dennis Potvin had it completely wrong. Well, he's got the rule wrong. A lot of yeah. these people don't know the rule. If they'd read the rule, they'd find out that when the puck is going in the crease, if you're in there, it's not a goal. Well, the producer had to say to him off camera, 
his stick was still in there. That's why they disallowed. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be a goal because I saw him desperately. Uh, he knew he was in there, Scott, Scott, and he was frantically trying to back out. And even uh, the puck was in the net before he got completely out of there. Even if you got a toenail in that, I mean, it's uh, the worst rule ever, and this has got to be the last year for it. It's a nightmare. And uh, the fact that Brian Murray is defending that rule really frosted my ass a lot. Not a yeah, little bit, a lot. When it, especially when his own player is saying that we're going to be called religiously for it. Right. Well, everybody is called for it. I mean, every every team in the league has been hurt by that this year, and it's just dumb. Now, last night, I will say that Mellonby was right in the middle of the crease, basically, right. and it could have interfered with Brodeur's ability to see the puck, but most of these goals that are being disallowed is the puck goes in on one side, and here's a guy like that Sundin goal when we played exactly. the Leafs here a few weeks ago. Exactly. Sundin's got a toenail on the red line on the border of the crease, and because he's, like, touching it where the puck is in the, uh, no goal. You know, that that's just bull crap. Yeah, it's the worst rule, one. the worst rule in the history of any sport, and they better cut it out. Okay, next question. Because like Cherry says, boy, if we have a big goal disallowed in the playoffs because of a bogus rule like this, people are going to be pissed off. Okay, next question. Yes, sir. Won't Yager play tomorrow night because their last game is Sunday night mm. at Boston, and I think tomorrow night's game should be more important to them than... Yeah, but you understand if he's like, uh, if that, uh, I mean, would, would you walk, would, would you play him if you're going to jeopardize him for the playoffs? I mean, the one thing they do know, they're going to be in the playoffs, and uh, I sure wouldn't jeopardize uh, Yager because they're a, to I mean, Mario's great, but without Yager, this is a different team. they got to have him in there. I see your point. I appreciate it, sir. And don't, and don't forget, don't forget, if we uh, beat him tomorrow night, it doesn't make any difference what they do against Boston. Yeah, that's true. Or against Tampa tonight. All we got to do is win one more game. That's it. Okay. And you know what? After last night, we will. All right. All right. See ya. Later. Could it be happening again, he asked, just like last year. I See, I didn't believe that. I thought that all these... I mean, I'm a doubting Steve Thomas. I just don't buy this crap. But it could be. Go into a blue, deep funk, and all of a sudden, something, somewhere, some magical thing... Uh, Fat Neil gets on the air, predicts the score, and says these guys are going to win tonight. And they didn't believe it. Then somebody, uh, the coach on the bench, Doug McClain, says, "Hey, Neil says we're supposed to win tonight. That means we got to score at least three. And all of a sudden, these guys wake up like magic. As I wove my magic spell, and I'm going, Robbie, Robbie. And all of a sudden, bada bing, bada bing. As Mark McEwen would say on the CBS Morning News, and why does he say it? We have an open line. I mean, there ain't no black people in The Godfather, okay? Isn't that what they said? So let them lose their soul? Something like that. I think the shoe, shoe salesman said that. Oh, Shoe Steve said that? Oh, by the way, Shoe Steve's going to be doing midday. We have an open line in day. It's 6229463. Oh, Jerry Williams is coming down? Okay, well, we got to do a thing, don't we? Got to do a thing. I got so much going on here. I got that Jika thing, which I'm desperately got to read that because it is really very entertaining, I thought, since most of it came from me. WIOP. Yesterday on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD, you missed this. Catch up on your sleep with Stan Major. This afternoon at 2 on News Talk Radio 610, <laughs> WIOD. 1050 at WIOD. We have an open line in day at 622-9463. 622-WIOD. Won't it be great to get all the old people back on here again? Sam Geisen's going to be doing uh, a 10 to 2. Larry bought him some teeth. Here's Sunrise. Hello. Holy Mackinac, Neil. How's it going? Great, Joe. <laughs> Hey, did Stan Major used to be a DJ in Toronto? I don't think so. That name sounds familiar. I don't think they let him in. Uh, anyways, uh, call, that last caller uh, talked about what I was going to talk about, the, go, the being in the crease. Yeah. That, that, that rule, it, it's too black and white. There's got to be some gray area, like if you're on the opposite side of the crease of the goalie. If there's interference with a the goaltender, then the goal should be disallowed. Yeah. If it has nothing to do with the goal, then it shouldn't, uh, then forget it. Yeah, and leave everybody alone side. and go uh, get a life. Yeah, if you're on the opposite side of the crease, it should go in. Right. And, uh... Just after that, uh, Potvin said, uh, I don't know his exact words, but he, he was mentioning that, uh, he goes, who would have known that God would have been there helping the goalie? Who would have known that God was there, huh? Yeah, that's what he said. God, I thought I was sitting in my seat. Uh, well, why didn't God uh, help the goal go in better? You know, like... I feel really, really shitty. Yeah. Well, leave it to Dennis to come up with another uh, asinine comment. Oh, that's okay. what he does best. He had two or three I mean, of them. He's, re he's really been incoherent lately, more so than usual. 
I know. He, he had a hat trick of uh, incoherency last night. Good. Nice going, Denise. <laughs> Maybe that's why my VCR shut down. <laughs> Thanks a lot, pal. Take care. We have an open line in Dade, 622-9463, 622-WYOD. We have a pair in Broward, 767-9463, 767-WYOD. So Woody Graber's coming in a half hour, by the way, about 1130 this morning with the Stella Blue Restaurant providing us, what is it, Stella Blue Restaurant at Nightclub on uh, the beach, providing us with some real nice juicy steaks. boy, Woody. Rimmer couldn't make it today because he said uh, that wasn't good enough. He wanted Chateau Briand. Too bad. You lose. Here's Cutler Ridge. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, Neil? Yes, I am. Yes, good morning. Good evening. I met you uh, I met you last night. Right before the game. Right before the game. Yes. Uh, I told you I got hooked to you because of my son mm-hmm. working so the bell. Right. And I didn't want to say I, I enjoy double you, get, uh, you show because my wife is Jewish from the Bronx. Oi. So when you meet... Mix the Jewish things that you have uh, with the Italian that you are into Italian now. I really, we really love it and we love. What a combination! How can you go wrong? <laughs> there, I, and you know how I got hooked. I mean, up? can it be ra- ravioli or crepe <laughs> What difference does it make? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got hooked on hockey in New York in 1950 when I came. I couldn't speak a word of English. Yeah. And uh, uh, in South America, the only thing they talk is about Notre Dame. Madison Square Garden, and uh, St. Peter's, uh, and St. Patrick's uh, Cathedral. So naturally, I wanted to see the Madison Square Garden. They got the marquee. I didn't know what they were saying, but I have money in my pocket. I bought a ticket, and I went in. What a spectacle. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing, right. Oh, my God, I got hooked into that game from 1950. Uh, now to you, because of my son. And uh, I know you are into Italian. And I have a little thing if you want to put it in a cart. If not, it's nothing nasty. It's nothing... Uh, okay, we'll put your little thing in a cart, <laughs> in a carton, and mail it out. In Italian, uh, everybody, Italian, said it when they say when uh, before they eat or during the dinner. And he goes, e man- you know, mangiare is to eat. Right. E, ma- e mangiare forte, e cagare forte, no temore alla morte. Which means? Which means eat plenty. Go to the bathroom and do plenty, and don't feel afraid to die. All right. E mangiare forte e cagare forte, no temore alla morte. Achipikia. <laughs> Can I say a uh, douchebag to my son? Please. Tulio, I know you listen because you listen every day. You are a douchebag, and your wife agrees with me. <laughs> Isn't you great? Okay, amigo. Thank Arrivederci. You. Thank you. I enjoyed meeting you yesterday. Okay. And great game. Say Thank goodbye. You. Bye-bye. Ciao. Two open lines in Dade, 6229463. Two in Broward, 767WYOD, 7679463. By the way, the uh, talk stations in the Paxton Empire are in a state of flux, is the latest rumor that we're hearing. They're in a state of flux, which is right next to Jersey. Here's Fort Lauderdale on a mobile. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Hey, George, how's it going? I mean, oh, oh sorry, Neil. Sorry about that. How's it going? <laughs> Great, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I'm sorry. I've been, like, listening for, like, the last 30 minutes. I finally got on the phone. Yeah. How's it going, Neil? Wanted to ask you something, though. I really enjoy your show. I've been first-time call, a long-time listener. Just wanted to find out where I can get, like, those CDs. I couldn't. I went to Borders a couple of days ago. Yeah, well, ask George. He'll tell you. Hold on. Take care of him, okay? He's so uh, boring. Okay, we have two open lines in Dade, 622-9463, 622-WYOD, and two in Broward. Where's the excitement this morning? Where's the enthusiasm? Where's the vinegar and what goes with it, man? Oh, my God. Are we going to have to do stupid, boring topics again? Let's talk about dead pedestrians. Every day of my life, when you come in here on a day like this, I'm going to read the Jicker column, okay? I'm just going to read That'll kill some good time. I'm just going to read that piece, even as much as I hate reading long, long, elaborate stuff out of the newspaper. It looks like that's what it's going to take. 1056 at WIOD. This is the time to get down to Kendall Toyota if you're interested in a new or used car. The reason being that their lowest, no haggling, no negotiating prices are waiting for you. And they're all clearly marked right there on the windshield of every new and used car in the vast inventory at Kendall Toyota. Prices like these, unbeatable prices, like brand new 97 Tercels with AC for an unbelievable $99.91. Brand new Corollas with AC for a phenomenally low $12,991. Tacomas with air for just $10,691. And finally, the deal of deals, the price of all prices, Camry LEs with air conditioning, automatic transmission, and ABS brakes for an incredibly low $17,991. Kendall Toyota's never been more capable of fulfilling your automotive dreams, and speaking of dreams and or nightmares, don't forget, before you, uh, 
put your head on the pillow, before you put your head on it, watch Miami Tonight, hosted by Mark Jacobson, co-hosted by Don Cox. Catch it late night at 1 o'clock in the morning if you're a real masochist. Kendall Toyota on US1, just south of Dayland, the largest, the biggest, the best in the universe, even if that infomercial, that TV show, whatever it is, is pretty weak. Prices include all incentives and rebates. End of spot. Don't get weird on us. It's only radio. 610 WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. In a survey, we asked all the inmates at the Hallandale Insane Asylum what they thought of Stan Majors. Here's what they said. <laughs> My mother used to beat me with a hairbrush. The Stan Majors Show. You've got to be nuts to listen to it. They say our love is taboo. That what we're doing is wrong. But I don't care what they say. Cause my love is so strong. They tell us we should be ashamed. We're not husband and wife. <laughs> but I cherish each moment with you. I'm so glad you're in my life. You're my prison bitch, my prison bitch. You're not like other men. Oh! I'm glad we share a prison cell when lights go out at 10. I can't escape the way I feel. Now that would be a crime. As long as I am doing you, I don't mind doing time. Cause you're my prison bitch, my prison bitch, and I have no regrets. I got you for a candy bar and a pack of cigarettes. At first you were resistant, but now you are my friend. I knew that I would get you in the end. You were sent from up above. Yeah. Prison bitch. Prison bitch. And now you are my prisoner. Oh, oh. I'm your prison bitch. Your prison bitch. And you're a sex machine. Uh -huh. My prison bitch, I'll never say goodbye. Oh. You're not like all the others. Too bad they had to die. Boy. On second thought, I think I'll stay. If you want me to, your prison bitch is never leaving you. Yeah, at first you were my cellmate, but now you're my soulmate. So come here, baby. Come here. Oh, no, not again. No, 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 no. Now I know why they call you a hard criminal. Hang on. You're about to find out why they call this the pokey. at WYD. I'm looking at the uh, food section in the Scum Sentinel this morning, and it's all about uh, Pesach, about Passover repast, and it's all about, uh, oh, look at this, an Italian Jew celebrates Pesach. What's he eating? It says uh, author uh, Edda Servi Maklin, 
author of the two-volume classic, Classic uh, Cuisine of the Italian Jews. And it goes, bop, bop, bop. What was this? What was about the food already? What were they eating? Okay, it goes on and on and on and on. And about the Italian Jews who came to Rome from Jerusalem and hocked the china and made ravioli and called them kreplach, et cetera, and so on. Being able to make their own matzah, something they used to do with parents as children. We nourished our souls, uh, and it's uh, nothing. Much to do about nothing. Leave it to the Sun Sentinel, okay? But anyway, it's got a, a picture of a lady here. It's Ethel Anton. Ethel looks, uh, she could be anything. She don't look all that Jewish. In fact, I don't think Ethel's even Jewish with a name like that. Probably Greek. Ethel of Sunrise has a farful kugel. Stuffed with pineapple, raisins, and bananas. <laughs> oh, my God. Farful kugel? So what's the deal? We can't have potato kugel? on. See, I don't know anything about it other than wine and matzah. That's all I know. What? I'm, I'm not looking at that stupid Jew calendar on the wall there, okay? I don't want to know from that. But she's got a farfel. Have you, you, you ever seen what farfel is like? There used to be a show on years ago on TV before you were born. There was a character called Farfel the Dog, and I have no idea what show it was, but there was Farfel the Dog. Farfel, t- I think, it's like, um, like a grain. Like, what's that awful, oh, that kasha, those little tiny bow ties? Oh, 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 just the thought of it makes me want to barf all over my shoes. And here's Ethel with a farful uh, kugel. What's wrong with a nice potato kugel? You can't have that on Pesach? What's wrong with that? That don't have no bread in it. That don't have no leaven or levin or nothing like that in it. We'll find out. Some Jew will call. Anyway, we have two open lines in day at 622-WYOD, two in Broward, 7679463. Bid to censor Rogers, prompted move, writes Tom Jick in the paper this morning. Something to look forward to, it says. Neil Rogers says that someday he'll tell the whole story of the contract negotiations that culminated in his jump from WYOD to All Sports WQAM. In his characteristically colorful manner, Rogers promises it'll make your hair stand on end. Of course, I forgot I was talking to Tom, which that ain't going to happen, Tom. I think I told Tom it'll make your hair grow back. In the meantime, Rogers fans will have to settle for the condensed version, version which is still pretty juicy. A window open for Rogers to consider new options when Paxson Communications acquisition of Cox-owned WIOD was completed on September 30th, 1996. Rogers had signed a five-year contract in February 94, which contained an escape clause should WIOD change hands. Rogers had a year from the date of the sale to terminate his contract, provided he gave 60 days notice or more. Uh, Rogers is an outspoken, controversial showman on the air. Off the air, he is a soft-spoken and cordial uh, with a strong sense of professional loyalty. His initial inclination, he says, was to stay at WIOD, which has been his radio home for over eight years. I didn't want to create a bidding war or anything like that. I was trying to be a nice guy. That was my stupidity, said Fat Fag Neal. Indeed, Rogers and his attorney, Fag Norm Kent, approached Paxton about an extension to his contract. In return for a longer deal, they sought a signing bonus and a pay raise, a customary practice in show business. According to Kent, the Paxson people were amenable, amenable. Attempts to reach Jay Holker, president of the Paxson Radio Group, were unsuccessful. A secretary said he's out of town. Isn't that unusual? He's out of town. Everybody in his company, they're always out of town. This bureaucrat's out of town. That one's out of town. They're on a plane on the way to Montana. They're on the way to Yuma, Arizona. Bud's on a plane circling New York. Roger's salary was to be kicked up to about six hundred fifty grand a year from approximately five hundred thousand. The last number is wrong, Tom. And we'll get a two hundred thousand dollar signing bonus. A meeting to formalize the contract extension was set. Rogers even told his listeners on the air he'd agreed to re-up, to re-up it, as in. <laughs> However, problems arose when Paxton demanded a quid for its quo. A quid for its quo. Interesting. Nice going, Tom. Palm Beach resident Bud Paxson, who owns the company, is a born-again Christian, and he reportedly was put off by some of the racing material on Roger's show. His lieutenants asked Rogers to sign an agreement that he would tone down, in effect, cease doing such material. Any departure from Paxson's restrictions could result in immediate termination. As far as Rogers is concerned, Paxson wanted to strip the format that's dominated South Florida ratings throughout the 80s and 90s. Kent says he informed Paxson we will not change anything in the contract that reduces Neil's rights. Right? Right. During the ensuing give and take, the new owner made a counteroffer of three strikes and you're out. According to Rogers, he wouldn't be uh, subject to firing unless he violated company policy, which goes beyond FCC guidelines, three times within 12 months. There are days, Jika says, when Rogers violates those rigid rules being suggested three times in 12 minutes. How about 12 seconds, Tom? God dang. We told them to stick it, Kent says. 
Finally, Rogers set a deadline for Paxton to agree to a new deal with the old language. Fifteen minutes before the deadline, according to Rogers, Paxton officials called and said they would go along. Rogers said he thought the deal was done. That was on a Friday. By the following Monday, Rogers says a new complication arose. Paxton wanted Rogers to sign an agreement to abide by a company policy manual, the one with those Christian values, that, that thing. It is not as restrictive as the conditions suggested previously, but still would have cramped Rogers' style. And I'm not becoming a Christian, okay? The breach of faith, as the talk host considered it, was the final straw. Every time we thought we had a deal, they came up with some new crap, Rogers says. Underline the crap. Kent was authorized to open negotiations with WQAM. While WQAM format is all sports, Rogers makes a neat fit because he's an avid sports fan and his program already features a heavy dose of sports talk. Moreover, Rogers' audience is dominated by young males, WQAM's target audience. WIOD jerked us around for five months, Kent says. I had an agreement with WQAM for twice the money within 24 hours. Within 72 hours, everything was approved. The deal was sealed at the end of the week. Rogers will keep his current hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the show will not change in any way, he says. God dang, that might change. The only remaining issues are when Rogers will leave WIOD and start on WQAM. Contractually, he is bound to WIOD till September 30th. He says he will honor this commitment, although he hopes WIOD will release him early. What time is it, George? Uh, his contract also contains a 90-day no-compete clause, which could keep him off WQAM till January 1. I'm hoping we can work something out that that doesn't happen, Roger says. But if it does, uh, if it does, he says he's been promised by QAM that he'll be paid while sitting on the sidelines. WQAM extended the same consideration when Jeff uh, DeForest moved over from WIOD at the end of last year. Rogers jokes that he wouldn't mind having a few months off uh, with pay to travel, especially at his new salary level. Asked how he feels to finally be in the million-dollar-a-year category, Rogers quips, Great, I think I've earned it after all I've been put through. After all the crap I've been put through. We left the crap out of there, Tom. Nice going, Tom. Oh! Actually, it contained most of what I said. Unlike Eleanor Brecher and Barry Jackson, who just sit there and kind of make it up as they go along and try to stir up problems. Try to stir up problems. Try to create some hostility there. Try to get other people to say crap about me and me to say crap about them. They ain't saying no crap about me. I'll say plenty of crap about them, but that's nothing new. They kind of enjoy it. Don't they? Here's a lady mobile in Boca. Hello. Neil. Yes, ma'am. You don't know a thing about Farfel. Don't even bother coming back. Okay. I'm listening. Yes? Uh, Farfel is little pieces of matzo. Right. It's not a grain. Well, but it's like, it's like uh, crumply. It's like, oh, it's horrible. It, 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 it's pretty... Good if you come to my house. Oh, fair. I'll pass. You'll over. Pass. I'll pass over. Now, let me tell you, you can have potato kugel on Passover. Mm. Okay? This is a way to... Nobody use... makes a potato kugel like my mother. I'll tell you that right now. Nobody in the universe except my grandmother, rest in pieces. Nobody makes a, uh, like my mo mother. Wait, does she do it in a pan? A frying pan? I don't pan? know if she does it in a pan. I think, uh, you know, she still does it where we do it, you know. Well, She's getting I... a little older, but I don't think she does it in a pan. Yeah, that's how you do you sear it in there. Yeah, she does it in the pan. But, but, but do you know why... Anybody you... out there do it in a pan? But how about in a bag? But anyway... You want to know why you have to do farfel kugel? Yes. Because it's just a, a way to use the crappy matzo all week. So in other words, if it's stale old... Yeah, but when you're paying 85 bucks for a five-pound box, you don't want to use it for farfel, <laughs> Right. But no, when the goyim have jacked the price up like that, you want to use it, put some butter and salt on it, and enjoy it like in its... You, you don't understand. When you go to the Publix now, there's a box that says Farfel. What it is is teeny weeny weeny little pieces of matzo already broken up. So in other words, it's old and stale probably. No, you make stuffing out of it. It's good. Come to my house, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Have a great Pesach. Thank you. Bye-bye. Two open lines, one in Dade, one in Broward. Dade County, 6229463. Woody Graber is here with lunch. Oh. oh, thank God. Hallelujah. And we have an open line in Broward, 7679463. 767WIOD. Woody Graber doing middays, 10 to 2. Oh. That's right. Woody will be on here. You know that show they have on INZ on the weekend? I think that guy, Bob, who used to be the sales guy over there. No, the show where he uh, does the restaurant reviews on INZ on the weekend. God, is that a horrible show. Bob's a good guy. I wish till I could think of his last name. Real good guy, and he does that show. Sandler? What is it? No, no, I don't think that's his name. Do you know him? He's, he's, I've met him a couple times. Is that his name? I don't know. I don't think, I don't think so. Know. That doesn't ring any bell with me. Well, then he's kind of like a heavy, a little heavy set. Uh, he's a good guy. At any rate, what he's a good guy. The show blows. But that's what what he's going to be doing. He's going to be doing a restaurant review show and eating uh, free meals here every day, uh, ten to two. Yeah. Just like we do. 
Okay, Woody's here with lunch. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Yeh Yeh Yeshua. Thank Yoshki. 11.15 at WYOD. 610 WYOD. Hey, boy, let me see your license there. Well, what's the problem, officer? It's going a little fast, weren't you? Say, what's that in the back seat? Uh, nothing. Crack Rock, sitting in his back seat. I said, Crack Rock, you can sell on the street. You can smoke it, and you'll catch a good buzz. Just don't get pulled over by the fuzz. Gay cop, singing with a big band. He's a gay cop. His nightstick in his hand, he got busted with three pounds of dope. So bend over and pick up the soap. I like it. The party's over, now it's J-A-I-L. You got busted and it's J-A-I-L. Wrecked him. You were once a big star, then you made the big switch. In jail, you're just busted. The party's over now, it's J-A-I-L. You got busted and it's J-A-I-L. 1119 at WRD. Woody Grubber, a graber, is uh, here with a great lunch. And, man, uh, it is dynamite. It's from Stella Blue, 1661 Meridian Avenue, just north of Lincoln Road, Miami Beach. Stella Blue has got great food. They also have live entertainment. And they got a partridge and a pear tree and a great menu and a sunset menu. And all kinds of, look at this. Oh, look at that. They got some fancy schmancy stuff there, too, on this menu. Like baby romaine, Reggiano Parmigiano, and uh, tempanade croutons, whatever the hell that is. What a, uh, an eggless Caesar salad. Sounds damn good to me. Mixed baby greens served with Sonoma Jack cheese and raspberry vinaigrette. And then they got uh, penne pasta with sautéed garlic and fresh uh, buffalo mozzarella and Roma tomatoes and uh, torn basil and uh, extra all virgin olive oliva, et cetera, and so on. And a whole bunch of good stuff. So thank you, Stella Blue, and thank you, Woody Grubber Graber. Got a nice big piece of meat. Nothing else here. Just a little steak sauce, a little A1, and that's it. Doing this Atkins so seriously now, man. Uh, I've had a uh, final chance. I thought I had my last chance at life, thanks to the Atkins diet. I got one more chance now. This is it. This is it. Last chance. We've only heard this from this guy 4,000 times. That's okay. As long as you're still breathing, you can still do it. And today I have the feeling I finally... Oh, I was talking to Kim, by the way, whom I happen to like very much. He's one of the nice people in our building. And Kim this morning was telling me that she does a B1 shot every week. Are you listening to me? Oh, that's right. He's eating food in there. I'm sorry. Paying no attention whatsoever. So the B1, or B12, I'm sorry. B12 may be the way to go. I think that uh, helped me a lot. I could be wrong about that. And especially since half of it was dribbling down my arm in my doctor's office while the girls in there were trying to figure out where you stick it and the needle too. But at any rate, uh, Kim says B12 is the way to go. Isn't that what you said? Once a week. In fact, uh, I think uh, Buddy Bud's going to come in personal and give me a shot pretty soon. That's right. That's the rumor. Here's Boca. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Congratulations to you and George on a move up. Thank you so much. I, it's wonderful. I've We're moving on up, just like the Jeffersons, man. Yeah, moving on up. I've been listening to, to you this morning, and uh, it's fascinating uh, uh, listening to uh, possible replacements. And I think uh, Stan and uh, Bird are both working, aren't they? No. Neither one of them is working. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Neither one of them. Well, you know, they're, they're both, but I think they're both available immediately. He's got that uh, show on uh, New York. Uh, he's got all the uh, insomniacs fooled to think he's got talent. I don't think he's ever going to leave that place. Who's that? Joey. Oh, that's right. He's, uh, that's amazing. That is a miracle that he's working, you know? I mean, he's got everybody fooled up there in New York. I don't think he's going to leave I that am show. that hemorrhoid. Right. Uh, but Pete he, Bolger said he wants Joey desperately. What would be interesting would be uh, Jerry Williams. He said, Williams, he said uh, they'll write him a blank him check. Retiring and moving down to Florida and taking on uh, some condo commandos. There you go. That would be some In fact, I had a call. I got Jerry's number in my pocket right now. Jerry called yesterday because he heard I was saying some nice things about him. I remember when he was in Chicago taking on Old Man Daly. That was fun. Right. But, so uh, I'm going to anyway, call Jerry you know, this afternoon wanna, and suggest he come on down if uh, he can make it. I want to talk about the, the Jika column. It's uh, very interesting because he talks about intolerance and integrity and royalty in this mm -hmm. column. And uh, I don't know if, if in, the intolerance is a Christian attitude. I don't understand Paxson at all. But I don't think Paxson has a, is really worried about it because after that Supreme Court decision, 
he's going to make so much money from his uh, TV network. That's right. That I don't know if WID is anything more. Now this is this is like a play now. toy. This is like a play toy. See, I, my idea exactly. of what I want to do with the rest of my life uh, in this business is working for people who take the business seriously. In other words, not people who got 80 million different projects going. They're selling TV stations for 40 million one day. Right. And they're doing infomercials the next day. And they got 80 million different things going on. I'd like to work for people who take it very seriously and to whom it is something important as opposed to just a play toy that they can't be bothered with right. and who are always out of town because they're busy diddling with their play toys. And basically, that's the way the Paxton Empire works. And they got all these zillions of dollars from that home schlock network. And they just keep buying up stuff and selling stuff like playing cards. And in the meantime, there's all these human lives in the, in the middle of it. And it's like, oh, we don't mean anything. See, that, that's the worst thing that ever happened with this business is uh, this. Just letting people gobble up all these radio stations, not only from the standpoint of the public gets screwed over, but the people in the industry who've devoted their entire lives to this thing, where they're getting screwed. Exactly. Uh, Paxton's going to make so much more money now that I think IOD has become almost an afterthought. Yeah. And uh, finally, I just want to say be an after You think it'll only be an afterthought with him? As far as loyalty goes, oh, okay. uh, when, uh, you know, when... Uh, Rick and Suds and, and Neil and Phil were on, my radio was uh, uh, stuck on WIOD from 6 to 6. And uh, now that uh, you're going to be on uh, QAM, uh, I'm going to move with you because uh, the real question, the real issue of loyalty, I don't think Paxson understands it. Just wait till he sees those numbers after you move over. Okay. There's no question about it. Good luck, Neil. Thanks a lot, pal. Okay. We have an open line on the out of town line, one triple eight four seven four. We have one in Dade, six two two nine four six three, and one in Broward, seven six seven. We had them all filled up there for a second, but they're very busy today. They've got something mighty important going on. They're all uh, busy getting drunk, getting ready for the big game against Pittsburgh tomorrow night. We'll have Mike Lang, voice of the Penguins on at one. And Mike is over in Tampa, of course, for the Penguin Pittsburgh game tonight, which is a big game for them, which they desperately need to win. And you do realize that if Pittsburgh let's see, we got eighty seven <laughs> they got eighty four. So Pittsburgh's got to win. Uh, they got to beat us, and they got win one of these other two games to get home ice. But even if they do win the other two games, if we win tomorrow, we're in the driver's seat. Panthers in the driver's seat. If we beat them tomorrow, no matter what else they do in these Tampa and Boston games, we're in. We got the home ice advantage. So let's just take care of our own business and not worry about what they do. Okay? Okay. Sounds good to me. Robbie. Robbie. All right. I knew he could do it. After he scored that goal, I look up at Rimmer. And he's beaming. He's like uh, hyperventilating. He's like dripping all over himself. And he looks at me and he says, because he's always mumbling to me. The crowd is screaming. He looks at me and he whispers, he mouths, my boy, my boy. boy, Rimmer. Nice going. Give you all the credit for butching him up. Here's a lady in Davie. Hello. Neil. Yes, ma'am. Congratulations. R Rimmer butched the Robbie up. Now he's going to try it himself. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, you are worth all the million, and I will be going wherever you go. Great. Okay. Um, and that Italian Jew celebrates Passover thing, there was one recipe. There was? It says... But by the time you get to it, uh, you're polishing already. It's called Mazzagna. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Oh, my, oh, not lasagna with matzah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My husband's Italian. He would he would uh, have a fit that yeah. it's even printed. Um, I have a shameless request. He got a new job in Delray. He's on his way there. He hates it. He calls it dead ray. Of course, yeah. you know why. Could you? <laughs> have a great day. Neil. Yeah. Can you play, please, play sitting on a bench in Delray? It's playing right now. Thanks. My wife took the car to the mall. Great talk up, sweetheart. She drives my Buick and she's three feet tall. I wouldn't ride with her, no way. I said I'd meet her there later today. Oh, so I'm just sitting on a bench in Delray. I like it. Waiting for the lolly bus to take me away. Oh, I'm just sitting on a bench in Delray with my friend Hein. The bus fares don't always stay the same. I'm not gonna do what Yetta tells me to do. To drive at her rates, she must be insane. Just sitting here, resting my bones. Oi! Wondering why my wife won't leave me alone. We've talked it over, but I never win. I just wind up slapping through them all again. Oi! So I sit on a bench in Delray 
waiting for the lolly bus to take me away. Oi, I'm just sitting on a bench in Delray with my friend Chaim. And there he is. It's about damn time. I've been waiting here all damn day on this bench. Where the hell have you been? Eleven twenty-eight at WIOD. Six ten, WIOD. About as functional as Al Bundy. Back at you. Hands waving at me. Nothing but blue hands on my TV. Blue hands under blue sheets, and they got nice. On their feet. I never saw the house smelling so nice. Now I'll have to lower my asking price. Nothing but containers lying on beds. All of them weird, all of them dead. Yes, blue hands waving bye bye. Going to Syria. Seriously die. Do it. Oh, geez. Thanks for the good news there, Max. Leave it to Max to come in here and cheer you up. He brought in a cigar with a big cross on it. It's the Paxson uh, Home Brand. Tomorrow is Max's last day, by the way. I think we ought to have a big lunch in here for Max. Let's have a big party. That's an excuse to have a bunch of Atkins food in here tomorrow, right? Where did you get that cigar, Max? He stole it. He didn't ask me. Well, he let him go, okay? Let that day go go. You just leave him alone. When? Congratulations to him. He's getting the hell out of here, Today. which means automatically he's moving onward and upward in the world. Tomorrow is his last day. We're having a going away party for Max tomorrow. Make all the arrangements, okay? Oh, we got the arrangement? That's all it needs. So at any rate, we'll have a big blast here tomorrow. Everything is looking up roses, baby. So Adam just came in and agreed with me as we were analyzing last night's Great Panther victory that it was the most embarrassing moment in the four-year history of our team, of this franchise, when the fans started yelling, Hey, ref, you suck, when Scott Niedermeyer got the double minor. Well, we got the, we got the power play, and the fans, the uh, 4,000 of them over there on the other side, are too damn stinking stupid to understand the game. And just because they have... I mean, you talk about sheep. If there's anybody in this audience who doesn't understand human nature and why people are so easily led down the garden path, it's like one guy yells fire. There's no smoke. Nobody smells nothing. One guy yells fire, and all of a sudden, everybody starts running. Ah! They're screaming or yelling. Same thing last night. If you want to be led by the nose the rest of your life, just like all you stupid religionists, just continue being led by the nose. Don't use your brain. And the same thing with this game. It's not that complicated. It's a great sport. It's the best in the world by far. It's not that difficult. But when you're screaming obscenities at the referee who just gave us a power play, it's embarrassing. The singular most embarrassing moment in the four years of the franchise. No, I take it back. You know what was the most embarrassing franchise? Do you remember uh, the game last year when they started throwing rats on the ice before, uh, while the game was going on? The game wasn't over yet, and it was late in the third period, and some assholes started throwing the rats while the game was going on. And guys were practically tripping and breaking their legs. I mean, you know, but hey, when you've had the first 40 or 50 beers, what difference does it make? Come on, have another one. There you go. Two open lines in Broward, 767-9463, 767-WIOD. Here's Matt from Family Bank. How could I leave him hanging there so long? How you doing, Matt? Hey, Neil. How you doing? Great. I just thought I'd call you up for some obligatory butt-kissing for a second and also to dispel a rumor I caught wind of just today. Did you say you want to give me a kiss? Is that I... it? I'll be right over, Matt. <laughs> Um, hey, all my customers love it when you come in. They all know it's you because when you pull away from the drive-thru in that hot new Corvette, they right. all say, hey, was that Neil Rogers? And I say, yes, it was. But uh, it is a pleasure serving you. And I just heard that someone called and said we got bought out by Barnett. Yeah, but we had a correction on that or I would have uh, contacted you. Somebody yeah. uh, called and started it. Well, some old bag who heard it about 10th hand and she said, oh, your bank is being bought out by Barnett Bank. So, yeah. uh... And then somebody called yesterday and uh, straightened that out. But I you think, can go ahead and straighten it out. I think they just wanted to get you all excited and hear you rant and rave because it's not true. No, they wanted you to call, which they knew would get me all well, excited. Did they tell you what is happening, though? No. Yeah, because what, what we are doing is we're planning a, uh, we're thinking about merging with another small bank. in Only $50. Yeah. It's, it's good, though. I mean, it's, it's going to be a good thing for everybody. They're, it's 
called Republic Security Bank. It was in the paper and everything. Right. Uh, it's a merger. They're just like us. They don't even have any branches here in Broward County, so it's just going to be a good thing for everybody. And Great. I promise I will still be here, and if I'm not, I'll call you and tell you where I'm going. <laughs> You're not going to be there? No, but I said I promise I will always you be You better here. be there, mister. I'm going to tell you right now. Damn the day right. you leave is the day that I take my $40 million and uh, head right down the road. <laughs> we won't be able to meet payroll then if you leave. That's so. right. <laughs> you got it. Hey, man, it is a pleasure helping you, and if you ever need anything, just call me. I'm taking it out in trade. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There's a great guy, Matt from Family Bank over there by the Sawgrass. You'll love to meet him. Believe me, I sure did. We have two open lines in Broward, 7679463. This is a great... You could eat this meal for like five hours, this steak. Have you ever seen a piece of meat this big, speaking of Matt? My God. This is a good... It side. is not it's good. Meat. It's great. It is uh, some prime steak, I'll tell you that. From Stella Blue, Black 1661. Angus what is it? Black Angus marinated Black sirloin. Black Anus? Oh, are you getting personal again? With Mary? Are you getting personal? Black Angus beef. It's the best uh, going anywhere, man. A great steak from Stella Blue, 1661 Meridian Avenue, just north of Lincoln Road, Miami Beach. And Woody Graber says it's a great place. It's his, it's his account. So naturally he says that. That's why Woody is blown up like a bullfrog because he's taking out all, like, speaking of taking out in trade, he's eating up all the profits at every one of the restaurants. See, Woody was having a tough time a couple of years ago, and I told him, I said, just go get a bunch of restaurants, and then you can eat all your meals for free, and look at him now. He's a giant in the industry. Here's a, and he also says that uh, the Paxson people are assholes. Okay, let's go to a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi, I have a comment and a uh, question for you. Yes, sir. I'm enjoying the show. Uh, he didn't say I that. I just moved to Florida. And do you see any major uh, rule changes in the NHL coming up? I, the only rule change I see coming up, I pray, is that they get rid of this in the crease thing. Okay. That's the only thing that we need. I mean, I just, I, I'm just an old-fashioned guy. I don't like to see uh, keep screwing. And I also would like to go back to the offsides rule the way it was last year, not the way it is now. I read Slows couple, the game down. I read a couple of um, sporting editorials where they want to increase the scoring by some rule changes. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Don't do it. Okay. Don't mess with the game. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. See ya. Gee, I'm just in the middle of, just in the middle of cutting my meat here. With one hand, I may have to use that other uh, damn mic, but I don't think so. Mmm. I can eat a steak with no hands. How do you like that? Well, that's disgusting. He's sure not going to be eating on the air like that the other place, is he? I might get Hank in there early, I'll tell you that. We have, in spite of all this talk, you know, I am so sick and tired of all the rumor mongers and all the yentas, and, and this one's upset, and that, you know, just relax, okay? Just go find a life. Take up a hobby. Part cheesy. It'll be great for you. Shuffleboard. You'll be able to live to be 200. Just play shuffleboard. Just shuffle it. Open line at date, 622-WIOD. Two open lines in Broward, 7679463. Here's Ocala. Hello. Hey, Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? Great. Congratulations on your move up. Thank you. And good luck to you. Uh, listen, I'm a truck driver. I'm going to get listened to you a couple times a week when I'm down there in town. Yes, sir. You're never going to syndicate, eh? Never know. Hey. I'm talking about it. All right. Well, I got a question to ask you. Now, I was listening to your traffic report the other day. That was your first mistake. That's right. <laughs> he said there was an overturned truck down there with sod. Yeah. I passed by there. I didn't see any truck or any sod. Yeah. Another accident down southbound in the Palmetto. Yeah, but you got to understand. Listen, let me say this to you. If it's a slow day and there's nothing going on, these people have to justify their existence. Yeah. In other words, if they just come on and they say, uh, there's no accidents anywhere, who the hell's going to buy a spot on that deal? <laughs> but if they come on and they make up all this good stuff and then somebody buys a spot and pays for it, then they feel like they're doing something. Well, I live in Ocala and I'm on the road like 330 days a year. I just wonder how much that job paid because, hell, I could stay home and call you from up here and tell you where the accident And just make up a bunch of crap, right. <laughs> By the way, you haven't hit any pedestrians lately, have you? No. Well, get busy. Why? No, just for the hell of it. Oh, come on. That, that's uh, careless driving, ain't it? That's, that's right. Fun. That's, that's fun. right. We had uh, we had Karen Kay on here last night talking about, the, bragging about the fact that she hits pedestrians. Oh, really? Yeah. How many points are you collecting there? And then she was talking about how bad the pedestrians are, like it's their fault. I don't think it ever dawned on her that she maybe can't drive worth a crap, but that's beside the point. You hear that or maybe? <laughs> well, listen, pal, have a great day, and uh, watch out for those guys who are giggling. Never Hold trust on, truckers. i call somebody a douchebag. I know he's listening down there in Miami. Go ahead. All right, Chet, I know you're listening. You rock hauling, fuel pumping, double sided douchebag. You. And don't trust those truckers who giggle, man, especially at the truck stops. <laughs> Have a great day, pal. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Neil. In closing, in yes. Clo in closing, sir, being you got a raise, loan me $50. All right. It's in the mail. <laughs> See you, pal. 
Yeah, Howard Kleinberg last night, who, by the way, is almost as big a fan of Eddie Jovanovski as I am. Oh, man, Howard, uh, he was just hyperventilating every time Eddie got another major penalty. In fact, he was saying, how about a game misconduct? Just get, then we have no problems, nothing to worry about the rest of the game. boy, Howard. And I'm not loaning you no money. You're doing okay for an old Jew. We have two open lines in Broward, 7679463, 767WIOD. We got an open line in. As a matter of fact, why don't we uh, get Stan this job, huh? Could always use that two grand. Right, George? 1142 at WIOD. If you haven't heard Brooke Daniels lately, here's what you missed. Right now in front of my face, I've got the Ultimate Man of Hedonism 2 calendar. And uh, the other one's the Stud Muffins of Science. By the way, you haven't lived until you've seen a uh, calendar made up of 12 men who in their real lives are scientists of one sort or another. Like these, these guys are normally nerds. So they just take their tops off and I'm supposed to get psyched on these guys when I know they'd rather be playing around with a Petri dish than me anyway. Brooke Daniels, weeknights on 610 WIOD. 610 WIOD. Wow, it's God! When some schlamio tries to put me down and says he has a larger congregation, I tell him right away, now listen here, to Nick, ain't you heard of my show? It's number one in the nation. All in space, give more dollars, we're so be true to your show. Good luck to you, okay? Man, wait till it comes out. You're going to be in for a real uh, surprise. 1148 at WIOD. We have an open line in Dade. We got two in Broward, 7679463. We got one on the out of town line, 1888474 WIOD, where it's a goyish Velt. Here's a mobile in West Palm Beach. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Great. Hey, uh, did anyone call you yesterday about the article in the Palm Beach Post about your move? Uh, somebody faxed it to me, and it was uh, pretty weak. Yeah, I thought so, too. Pretty okay, weak. I tried to get you a couple times yesterday just to let you know about it. I thought it was, first of all, amazing that it was on the sports page. Oh, was which, it? Yeah, it was on page two of the sports page, uh -huh. which, um, you know, shows you where their head's at. Right, up their ass. Yeah, and then also, uh, you know, the comment about uh, Hank Goldberg being referred to as the Hummer, and uh, you were openly critical of Chris Moore. Oh, isn't that a shame? And guess what? We'll continue to be. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I saw him at the game last night, and he was speaking. He wasn't as happy as uh, usual with me, but he was speaking. And, uh, you know, life goes on. Yep, they just yep. don't get it. They just don't get they it. They don't get it. Well, best of luck to you, buddy. Thanks a lot, pal. Thank you. See bye. you. Two open lines a day. It's 6229463. I like am I going to go over there and start saying, hey, that Chris Moore, he's the best hockey announcer in America. Give me a break, okay? 
You can't make uh, chopped liver out of uh, farfel. Two open lines a day at 622 WIOD, appear in Broward, 7679463. So the word is out, of the cat's out of the bag, by the way, about Rick and Suds doing topics now. I, didn't I warn you about this, about that freaking Walter Sable? I told you that bastard, he would screw up this place. That's another reason I'm, I'm tickled to death I'm getting out of here, man. Another formula talk show guy. Yeah, we got to do topics. Yeah, t- stick that topic up your... Rectum. Okay, you phony piece of crap. It's just unbelievable. They're going to bring in... You know why people bring in consultants? Because they don't know what they're doing. That's the only reason they bring in consultants is they don't know what they're doing. And these people bought this radio station. They had no more idea what this station was all about than the price of rice in Peoria. They hadn't got a clue what it was all about. And even in the interim months, they were too busy with all their other properties, with all their other investing and speculating and bop, 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 and whatever else they're doing. And didn't do justice to what was going on here, to say the best, okay? They didn't have the foggiest idea. So let's go out there and hire a consultant and pay him big bucks. Instead of paying Wayne the few dollars that he's owed to short on his salary, on his pathetic paycheck, oh, we can't afford it, that's life, life is tough. That's what that broad over there, that bitch, is telling him every payday. Instead of that, we can't afford the few bucks. But let's give hundreds of thousands to this Walter Sabo so we can put his girlfriend on here here at night and he can come down here and screw up Rick and Suds and screw up the whole damn radio station. I knew I knew what was coming. And they kept saying, oh, no, this isn't going to happen. You're wrong. Yeah, right. Topics, 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 topics. That's it. You're not fooling me, Walter, you geek. You phony, you slick-tongued piece of turd. We have an open line in Dade, 622. We have two in Broward, 767. We're talking about drunken drivers. We're talking about pedestrians getting hit by people that can't drive their finger up their nose. If I were you, Karen, I'd stop hitting pedestrians, okay? <laughs> I think that would solve the problem. Quit the... <gasps> exactly. Because the next... <gasps> you do it might be the last if you don't watch it. Quit hitting pedestrians out there, you crazy bitch. She's very nice, though. She's a nice... But she's a crazy bitch in a car. Wonder what's going on in that car. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, ordinary, when you drive in a car, the light changes. If there's somebody crossing the street, I'd like to see her drive in Rome. Talk about hitting pedestrians. I'd like to see her drive in L.A. You know, in L.A., they got that militant thing in the black neighborhoods, which is in between all the chink neighborhoods. And when they step off the curb in Los Angeles, I guess all over the state of California, the pedestrians have the right of way, regardless of where, even if they're jaywalking. And so, like, if a white person is driving, like, in a black part of town in L.A., And uh, they just step off the curb in the middle of the road just to piss you off and make you slam on the brakes. It's like a statement. So I'd like to see her driving out there and see some pedestrian come across the street and think that uh, she's got the right of way because the light's green. Get with it, sweetheart. Quit killing people, okay? That's what Rick Sanchez said. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Congratulations on your move, Neil. Thank you so much, sir. Here's, you're 100% right about consultants. Here's something for the consultant to, to take in. Yeah. I listen to your radio show, not because of your 610 dial. because just the, I only listen because I listen to what Neil has to say. I right. like listening to People you. listen to a show because they like the show. They like the personalities. They like them. They right. hate them. They're aroused. They're entertained. They're amused. Uh, whatever right. it is, because there's something going on. Not because somebody is coming on it. Well, what do you think about, you know, and the fill in the blank? In addition to which, when somebody brings up only one topic and they try to beat it into the ground, guess what? If somebody's not interested interested in that topic, they're gone. It's like an invitation to tune out. It's like That's I right. sat here uh, hocking about hockey all day. Oh, sorry. That's, That's right. right. I would imagine your business, you have to be as flexible as possible to capture a, a large audience. Not me. But, I am uh, inflexible man. and adamantine. Listen, I'm I don't immovable as a rock. I don't care where you go, Neil. I'm going to listen to you. Listen, one other thing. I was in your favorite Thanks, place this week in Tampa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Man, that's the first time I've been there. Let me tell you something. You're hundred percent right on the money. Uh huh. When these people are it's nowhere. That city is That's the most dead. Yahoo place I have ever been in my life. Amazing. I've never seen so many Yahoos oh. per square inches there are on the air in Tampa. Amazing. Uh, did I say on the air? And also uh, off the air. Oh, in the air. Have you heard of this guy Bubba on ninety seven point nine? Bubba the Love Tampa? Sponge, yeah. Never heard him you know, though. Never heard of him. You know they can say uh bullshot on the air up there. Oh, can they? <laughs> yes, they were saying you're right. I'm like, what? It's the most amazing thing. Well, isn't that great? <laughs> Can't <laughs> wait. Time I had in three days. <laughs> what time is he on? Uh, he's uh, in the morning. He's uh-huh. on in the morning. Yeah, I understand. But, the rumor, uh, rumor has it that he may be coming over here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear him say that. I know that people. Well, Tommy to, Kramer uh, don't want to let that out, but I just yeah. uh, I just started that rumor. Well, just to okay, piss off Tommy go. Kramer because he's a butt plug because he's got all that hair up somebody's rectum. Hey, listen, Neil. What an ass kisser you are, Tommy. If you, looked, if you looked in Alan Mason's, Rectum. you'd find Tommy uh, Kramer's head print. 
Hey, listen, I admire your character and your integrity, man. You keep doing what you're doing. I'll listen to you anywhere you go. Thanks a lot, have, pal. Have a good day. See ya. We have an open line in date, 62294. And you know something? Since since it became official, you know, right up till the last minute, Tommy Kramer was in here. I realize they're in their other studio there, but I see him in the hallway in the morning. He avoids me like I got bubonic plague, which I do, by the way, Tommy, so stay away. But before then, he was in here every morning sucking around. I mean, the suction was so great, I was holding onto this chair with both hands. I had my feet cupped under the bottom of the chair just to keep from getting sucked away. And now, all of a sudden, since it's official, I ain't going to be here anymore. And I didn't get sucked into all the bull crap. And, uh, well, Alan Mason is great and Buddy Bud is... Yeah, right. Great. Have a great life with him, okay, Tommy? You old burnout. Now, all of a sudden, he don't, like, he don't even look at me like, oh, like uh, the unclean, the Antichrist. I think Tommy Kramer's the freaking Antichrist. I told you that months ago. And you know something? The more I'm here, the more I'm positive it's true. I'm positive it's true. Either Tommy Kramer or Bud Paxton are both...